Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. We are still looking at uh, that IEB exam and of course for those of you who are writing GDE you'd find these questions quite helpful as well uh, in preparing for your exam. So if you haven't subscribed please just make sure that you're part of the family and of course you can always get in touch with us. Uh, for any assistance. And by the way, uh, I am planning to do a live session, um, but uh, we are still kind of preparing for that one. All right, now let's look at uh, the photoelectric effect. All right, so they say the table below gives the frequency range of photons of different types of electromagnetic radiation. All right, so you've got that table there. Now, the first question says to us, we need to convert 2.2 electron volts uh, to joules. Now, please remember, so to answer that, um, we now need to always keep in mind that to convert from electron volts, so 2.2 electron volts would be actually 2.2 multiplied by its 1.6 times 10 to the exponent negative 19 joules, right? And essentially, you this is the unit uh, um, uh, energy of uh, an electron volt, right? So all we simply need to do, uh, so that's 2.2 multiplied by 1.6 exponent negative 19, and we get 35.2, or you can say this is 3.52 exponent negative 19 joules. So that's the amount of energy that you have there. Right, now the second question says, calculate the frequency of a photon of radiation with uh, the energy 2.2 electron volt. So we're looking for the uh, frequency in that case. So um, we know that E is equal to H multiplied by F. Obviously, that's Planck's constant. You are given that constant, by the way. Right, so we know the energy that we have is that 3.52 uh, times 10 um, exponent minus 19, okay. And this uh, Planck's constant is given as 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 uh, multiplied by the frequency. So we're looking for the frequency in that case. Right, so all we're simply going to do is divide by 6.63 on both sides. If you wanted to, by the way, uh, you can make, um, you know, frequency the subject of the formula before you, you substitute. Okay, I'm making a mistake there. So that's 6.63 times 10 minus 34, uh, of course, uh, in this case. And um, so what I'm going to do because my calculator actually gives me a little bit of an issue. Okay, I've just dropped my calculator just now. Uh, so that's 3.52 exponent minus 19, and this is divided by 6.63, and that's minus 34. Okay, and I get a frequency of uh, 5.31 times 10 to the power 14 or exponent 14 uh, and remember that frequency is measured in hertz um, of course if you did not round that off okay you take the answer as is i think you're going to get something to the effect of uh, um, 5.33 okay so if i divide that by 6.63 okay exponent negative 34 okay yeah so uh, actually, it's run about the same value, 5.31. All right. Now, uh, let's take the next question. They say, what color of light does a, photo, uh, does a photon of 2.2 electron volt produce? Now, where are we going to get that? We're going to get that from our table, right? So if we look at that frequency, 5.31, um, if I look at it, uh, that would fall within this range, Okay. 5.11 to 6.11 so that would be yellow to green light so in that case to answer that question that would be yellow to green okay right next question 
Okay, so they say define the term work function. If you don't mind, ladies and gents, I'm not going to write this one down. Okay, so we know that this is the, uh, the minimum energy required to emit electrons from a metal surface, right? All right, now the next question, actually, I, I just should have uh, um, separated them somehow. Okay, so 9.1.5, they say UV light which has uh, obviously a frequency there, 8.9 times 10 to the power 14 or exponent 14 falls on a calcium surface with the work function. So we've got the frequency of calcium, I mean of uh, UV light. We've got the work function of calcium. They say calculate the maximum kinetic energy of a photon emitted uh, from the surface of calcium due to the incident UV light. Right, so in this case, what we simply are going to do, uh, so that's 9.1.5, um, right, 0.5 rather. Okay, so remember, we know that our formula simply says the energy of a photon is equal to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy. But what are we looking for? We're looking for Ek max this time around. Okay, so this is going to be the energy. Of course, we subtract the work function. That's energy minus, rather, uh, the work function. But we know that the energy of the irradiated uh, photon will be uh, Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. That's minus the work function. Okay, so that would be 6.63 times 10 minus 34. Right, multiplied by the frequency that we're given there uh, is 8.9. That's 8.9 exponent 14 minus the work function that we're given is 4.59. So that's 4.59 minus 19. All right, so uh, all we need to do obviously is a bit of calculator work. Okay, so I'm going to do it on this calculator here that I have in my hand. Okay, that's minus 34 uh, multiplied by uh, 8.9. Okay, negative or, or rather 14, positive 14, right? Uh, to the exponent 14, right? And we subtract there uh, 4.59 uh, exponent minus 19. All right, so I get an answer of 1.31, okay, times 10 to the exponent negative 19 joules. All right, please, if it happens that I make a mistake, uh, which I so often do, I hope you guys knew how nerve-wracking recording these videos uh, uh, can be. Uh, you know, that's why there are many mistakes. Right. Okay. So uh, in this case, they say to us, uh, explain how the photoelectron, um, uh, so the photoelectric effect rather, provides evidence for the particle nature of light. Okay. Right. Now, how we need to, um, uh, you, you know, we, you kind of need to, um, uh, you know, explain the two, why it's not the, the wave nature first and then go into the particle nature. Now, remember, if light was behaving as a wave, right, it means that if we increased the intensity of light, we would have, we, we would eventually get to a point where electrons are, are emitted. But that is not the case, right? So if you take any frequency, you could take any frequency, by the way, and just increase the intensity and that would make electrons to actually, uh, you know, uh, jump out, right? Uh, to be emitted. But now in the particle nature, it doesn't matter what the intensity is, no matter how low the intensity of light is. But once you irradiate the electron, I mean the the the, the metal, um, with as you increase frequency, then only do you see electrons actually uh, being emitted. Okay, so I don't know how you're going to phrase that. Okay, but uh, you know, just take the explanation that I've just given and put it into words. Okay, right. As I move on to the next question. 
Okay, right. So the last question in this case, they say to you, in a sample of excited mercury, right? Uh, mercury atoms, rather. Uh, all the energy levels are shown in the figure below uh, um, are occupied. One of the energy levels in the figure is labeled X. Okay, you can see it there. All right, they say the emission spectrum of mercury shows lines at approximately 0 0.9 electron volts, 1.5 electron volts, and 2.2 electron volts. Right, now they say to us, calculate X showing all you're working out. Okay, so essentially, ladies and gents, the trick in this question, um, obviously, you know, is around, uh, you know, those given electron volts uh, over there, right? Uh, I'm actually trying to annotate, but uh, it's not working. Right, so I'm just going to write it at the bottom there. So now I, I want you to just kind of think about it. So if I look at, uh, you know, if you look at those gaps, you know, in your diagram, right? So you've got 0 0.9, you've got 1.5, and you've got 2.2, okay? It looks like the widest gap when I look at it, right? The widest gap that I have, um, you know, I wish I could kind of uh, annotate this so that you could see it, okay? Uh, I'm not sure why it refuses to work. All right. So if it looks like the widest gap, if you look at it, uh, is between X and 6.7. All right. So I would tend to associate that gap with 2.2 electron volts because that's the uh, widest one uh, um, uh, that I'm given. Right. So I would say, well, in this case, I'd say X minus uh, 6.7 in this case would actually give me 2.2 uh, electron volts, right? So let's see, if we wanted to find the value of X, so X would be, uh, if I take that to the other side, uh, so that would be 8.9 uh, electron volts. But let's see if this number actually corresponds uh, with all the others. Now, if I look at the smallest uh, gap uh, between the two, uh, which was 0. Point, uh, or actually 1.5 uh, no 0. 0.9 is the is would be the smallest okay so if i were to take 9.8 and x okay um that looks like it's the smallest difference that i have there between the two okay so if i said 9.8 minus x that would be 0 0.9. Let's see if we get to the same, uh, you know, value. So I would have X, if I take X to the other side, it becomes positive. So 9.8 uh, minus 0 0.9, okay? Yeah, it looks like it gives me exactly the same value, which is uh, 8.9 uh, electron volts, okay? So the question is, now, the last one, which is 1.5, where would it be? Okay, um, so this would be actually from the topmost value, right? And minus that, uh, uh, minus X in that case. So if we take 10.4, again, uh, plus, yeah, let's see. Uh, if I said uh, 10, no, 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 actually X plus 1.5, so if I said X plus 1.5, now uh, in this case, sorry, we, we've got X now, we found out that X is actually uh, an 8.9, right? 8.9 plus 1.5. Uh, so if I take that plus 1.5, that gives me that 10.4. Uh, electron volts and you can see how that will be actually the value right at the top okay so it means that our value for x in this case uh, would be um, uh, 8.9 so we're sticking with our guns uh, to our guns in this case that would be the value for x all right uh, so please remember that line emission spectrum in this case um, you know the, that difference between the lines would give us uh, actually the difference in energy and whether it's an emission spectrum, you take obviously the topmost uh, minus the one below 
uh, in this case. But if it's an absorption spectrum, obviously, uh, you would take from the bottom to the top. Okay, right. And I want to leave it there, ladies and gents. I hope that you were able to really understand this question. And I will see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.